Okay, so this panel is all about what labels are looking for in 2024. And no matter where you are in your journey, whether you're just starting out, whether you're further along the line, it's something that all artists need at some point in their career, unless they decide to take an independent route. So today we have four voices from four of the key house music labels of today. I would like to introduce the panel. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Carly, do you want to start with it? What's your name? Where'd you come from? <laughs> um, I'm Carly. I am currently an A&R at Nervous Records, who are based in New York. Uh, I've been there for a couple of years, but before that, I was at Material Music, um, who runs Stress Records, Need One, and Future Disco. Nice. Oh, hi. I've got a mic. I think it's on. Oh, can you hear me? I was better. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I've done this before. Um, I'm Mark Knight, and I run Tour Records. Uh, hi guys, is that on? Yeah? No? Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Ben Malone. I'm the general manager of Armada Music UK, um, and I'm also a broadcaster on KISS FM and uh, Tomorrowland One World Radio. Hi everyone, I'm Griff Harding. I am a and Art Defected Records and also do D for Dance, DFTD as well. Nice. Okay, so what I'd love to do is just start at the real beginning. When you're looking to sign an artist, what I'd love to know is what are you looking for when you're trying to sign an artist rather than a tune? Carly, do you want to start? Will someone else go first? <laughs> I'll, I'll, ju I'll jump in. Um, I, I don't take that approach. I think we built Tour on a foundation of music, um, and it's music first, always. So we always sign records first, tracks first, um, and then evaluate what the artist has got and then see if we can help build that and project that into something, into something bigger. But fundamentally, we start with music. Um, and I was just thinking about this before we come on, what, what are we looking for? And let me give you a tangible example of that. The last time I heard a record and I thought, this is really different, this really sticks out now. And if you know our catalogue, um, you'll understand you know, the record I'm about to explain. When I heard Cruz's record, Selector, Matt just put it on in the office. I was like, what the fuck's that? So, like, and it's something different. It was something original. It was something unique. It was something that isn't a pastiche of something else, isn't trying to be something else. Because as an A&R or as a DJ or as a music fan, you can hear straight away um, if something is uh, an interpretation of something else or someone's trying to be someone else, something else. I guess that was the record that really sticks out in my mind that was like, this is different, this guy's got something. I don't know who he is, but this, this is really saying something, this record. Then you look into what their artist profile is, how we can help, what needs developing. I mean, Crucy has got all the bits, he ticks all the boxes, uh, thankfully, but we always start with the music. Is that the same for Armada Ben? Yeah, totally. We always start with at least one or two records, but then I think if you're looking at an artist's pros proposition as a whole, it's consistency. You've got to have a bank of good music that we know if we're going to start working on a longer-term relationship, we're going to be able to follow it up because 100% has to start with, with the first track and the right music. But if you want to work long-term, you need some consistency and you need something that we can build uh, and work with. And, you know, with the age of TikTok now, there's so many tracks that blow up overnight and become massive and then there's no follow-up. And... Uh, I think certainly for, for, for us, we want to work with people on a longer term basis and, and grow them, uh, kind of, and you need the consistency there. Griff? Without being that person that agrees with everyone, I will agree with everyone <laughs> <laughs> for Defected. No, we have the same approach again. It's, it's all about the music initially. We, we, we want to develop artists through their sound. I think knowing your sound is important, as, as sort of Ben and Mark have said, that consistency, um, yeah, because especially with new artists, you want to have a, a strong entry point into the market. I see often where artists will jump from multiple genres in their first five records, and you've got to think from a DSP perspective, an artist perspective, a label's perspective, you've really got to have that honed in. If you jump from genre to genre, you, you hit too many markets. It's, it's the master of everything, master of none or something like that. What's, what's the phrase? I've done this terribly, but yeah. <laughs> Carly, what about you? Um, I think it's it's also like different depending on different labels. So you know, when I was at Material Music, one of their labels is, was Need Want, uh, is Need Want rather, and that's very much a much more of an artist-led 
label. They're looking for, you know, artists for longer term projects. Whereas some of their other labels are just more like, you know, this is a banging club track, let's put it out. You know, at Nervous, we have our legacy artists like Louis Vega, who are, you know, long standing artists with us. We put out albums. And then with some of the newer artists that we work with, it's just like, okay, you know, this is a new artist, small social following, whatever, but it's a great track, let's put it out, that kind of thing. So, yeah, it can vary. So what would you say between you are the current and future trends within house music? And do they influence your A&R decisions? Griff, do you want to take it? Yes. Um, I think at the moment, the speed has gone up generally across the market. I think everything's ramping up at about what, 134 plus. Um, and that always happens with the influence of D&B as well. <laughs> um, look, we, we've, not, we've not followed that route at Defected. We're sticking, sticking to our classic house guns. Um, we've invested a lot in the sort of African scene, South Africa, Afro House. Um, we recently re launched, uh, well, launched our new label, One People. We signed Alex Wan and Meme. Um, and I think there's some amazing things, obviously, what the kind of music boys have been doing out of that world. Um, yeah, we're, we're, sort of, we're, we're sort of heavily investing in that area as well. Um, and yeah, look, it does, it does affect your decisions. It, it, we still stick as a label to what we classically do as Defected, and that is good, great, best quality house music. Um, but look, it is important as an A&R to look at trends, what is working and what isn't. Um, yeah. I think Armada has always been a, a multi-genre uh, label, so we've always kind of signed music from, from across the full spectrum, from trance to techno to house music to kind of everything in between there. So it's quite interesting to us to watch uh, the trends flow and move and we're able to kind of navigate that quite easily but i would definitely agree stuff's getting faster on the one hand but it's also getting slower in the afro <laughs> so we, we kind of go in either way of 126 um, up and down i think you know last year we saw the kind of return of, of trancey melodies and, and trance into house music and commercial dance uh, a lot more than it has done for the last few years it's interesting to us in particular because we were originally a trance label uh, so I'm definitely hearing more melodies and more, uh, yeah, and kind of um, musicality in, in house music and in, in dance music in general. Um, but I think the speed is, is the obvious thing up and down uh, either way. First of all, I'm going to say there's no need to go any faster than 124 BPM, <laughs> right? Well, let's, just get that, let's just get that clear before we move on, all right? Okay, let's all agree and sign up to that. Okay, but we can move on. Um, I think for us, we're about setting trends, you know. I think that's what <coughs> makes us unique. That's what made us stand out initially. So what we've, what we've done at this juncture is gone back in time, you know, because music moves in cycles. It's about going, okay, where are we at now? Let's look at what we've done in the past and highlight something that was really strong. So we kind of went back to, like, 2008. And when we did um, the Tony Romero record, Mac, just help me with the name of it. I forgot the name of it. That's the one, Raw. Um, that was just a record that blew up in 2008. <clears throat> I was like, well, look, let's go back, and Matt, and all that. let's go back and focus on that, because that was a moment we haven't done that for a minute. So that's a great way of, of not following trends, but setting trends. Go back and look at the timeline of music and go, okay, what really worked well in 2006? And take the best part of that and redo it and update it and go, because you know it works, you know it translates, and just give it a modern spin. So you can follow trends or you can set trends, and that, that can be just a reinterpretation of something's worked in the past. But I think we don't tend to look too far out of what we know and what we stand for, because that's what makes us us. We stick in this lane and we do it very well. So I think from us it's more about what trend can we set next, you know what I mean? Because <coughs> people don't know what they want, you've got to tell them what they want. You know, it's, it's about like, this is what you need. Like, Apple don't say, right, okay, who wants an iPad? They tell you you need an iPad. Oh, fuck me, how have I survived without an iPad? <laughs> so um, it, it's about uh, taking that approach from Torrance's perspective. Um, nervous, uh, you know, like we've got quite an underground sound, so that's something we generally kind of stick with. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say we follow trends too much. Um, but, like, obviously, you've got to remain relevant, um, that kind of stuff. But, yeah, we, we've definitely got a kind of a more classic underground uh, sound, I reckon. So, between you, what I'd love to know is, are you signing tunes based on changes in music consumption? So, say, for example, Spotify changes the algorithm, they're prioritising certain tunes. Are you then going, well, we need to sign 
more of that? Or you're seeing a trend on Beatport. Are you then following those trends? I think that you... It's not like the defining thing at all. Uh, you know, as Mark said, it's always about the music. But, like, it definitely plays a part. When you hear a track, you have to know where it sits. Is this a radio track? Is this something that's going to be big in the clubs and on Beatport? Or is this a track that's going to stream really well because it's put in the right Spotify playlist? Do you know what I, I think? You sort of fuck the algorithm, really, <laughs> if, if you want my honest answer. It's, it's like, music shouldn't be based on algorithms. Let's just do good music. And let's make Spotify follow us. Not us. For, why should we pander to what they're going to... Let's go and make great music, which we feel and we love. Do you know what I mean? Let, let's do that. Let's just fuck the algorithm. Like I said, that, that should be a, a topic of... Uh, fuck of the ne- algorithm. Mark Knight, 2024. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'll try and follow that up. <laughs> I think, <laughs> fuck the algorithm, but um, I think I totally agree with, with what the guys have said. You're, you're not signing records based on uh, the algorithm or what you think is happening in the market. You might sign tracks with a specific area in, in mind. So we might sign a record because we think it's going to work in clubs, and therefore you're looking more at Beatport and you know other kind of DJ portals, and you've got that at the back of your mind when you're signing it, rather than you know if you sign a techno track, it's probably not going to stream that well. So you're looking at different reasons, there's different marketplaces for different records, but you're not signing them specifically to, to pander to that. It's all about the track, and just different tracks sit in different places. Yeah, I agree, agree with everyone. It's sort of the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> Get you a t-shirt. Exactly, yeah. You got off easy today. On the end. <laughs> um, the algorithm follows anyway, I feel. Yeah, it, it should be the other way around. It doesn't define what we do. Um, yeah, it, it's something that comes after. So obviously a lot of people here are up and coming DJs, producers, um, you're sending your music to labels the whole time. Um, and I think sometimes as a new artist you can sit back and be like, right, why are labels signing certain artists and not signing others? So what I'd love from each of you is an example of an artist that you've signed recently and why. Griff, I'm going to start with you. Big question. Um, we, I, I sort of use two examples. There's, there's obviously big names. We sign big names a lot, and and they have fan bases and they're important. So recent one we just signed Hot since '82, um, one of his first records out, Knee Deep in Sound, bringing him into the Defected family. Um, he's he's one, and th- obviously I don't really need to say too much of why we signed him. He's massive. He's doing everything right, and the music's amazing. Um, other artists we signed, like we've just picked up on D for Dance, Sean Owen. Um, been working with Sean for about 12 months now. We've sort of been getting her heavily in the studio. Um, and that sort of came from a, a relationship-based experience with Sean and met her and her passion and everything she wanted to do and what she's doing with her brand and what she was doing on her live scene and her hustle. And what she, she'd built a big brand herself. She'd been working hard at it. And we were like, look, we can give you, give you the keys to the car if we can go get you in the studio, get the right songwriters in with you, get the right co-producers and, and develop you from there. Um, yeah. Great. Carly? Um, (laughs) So, uh, actually, it's really cool. There's an artist called Laura. um, And when I worked at Need Want, I think it was in about 2019, um, I was sent her music from a really good friend of mine. And she'd... I didn't realise at the time that um, she was previously releasing music for years as femme. She was kind of like a left-field pop artist who I knew and followed. And she was also in a band called uh, Ultra Ista. Um, with the producer from Radiohead, who I also love. So I'd been to like loads of her concerts. Um, and then I found out that this, these tracks from Laura was this, this girl, Femme. Um, and straight away, I knew that she had something special. It was, she re- really just like has a totally unique sound, which is like, you know, it takes a long time to be able to do that. And she was, you know, fusing loads of different types of dance music um, and featuring lots of urban artists. And... I come from a sync background as well. I don't know if some of you probably know what sync is. Um, Maybe some of you don't. But it's basically when you place music on TV commercials, film, or that kind of thing. And so when I listen to music, I'm always listening with my sync ear. And I'm like, not only are these tracks relevant for nightclubs, but um, they're really synky. And um, there's... 
you know, a particular style of production that works well across um, film and TV. Um, so, yeah, we, we ended up signing her for, I think it was like an album deal. Then I left, went to Nervous, and years later, um, you know, she's since come out of that deal, and now I've signed her to Nervous, a couple of new tracks. Um, so I like the way that it's, you know, gone full circle. And she's just... She's a very, very talented artist. Um, she's, you can hear in her music that she's a musician, first and foremost. Um, she writes great songs. Her production level is, like, out of this world. And she's just, like, a pleasure to work with. Really, like, a real pro. And really nice. Mark, over to you. Um, okay, we, well, we've recently signed, or not recently, but a sell. Um, the reason why, because she, she hits that sweet spot. Um, and when Torum's really at its best, if you can imagine two circles that overlap, you've got underground here and you've got commercial here. Now, where they overlap, and that little... T oh, thanks, Ben. That <laughs> tiny little bit in the middle, right there, if you can hit the bullseye there, where her, her records, the most commercial guys, it's their most underground moment, and the underground guys, it's their most commercial moment. If you can hit that sweet spot right there, then you talk to everyone. You talk to the whole audience. And she's got that ability to write records. Just It just comes very naturally. First. She doesn't have to try to do it. It's effortless. The way she writes music, it just it fits there. So it's perfect. That's the perfect um, look for us in terms of what we're looking for in artists. And then, crucially, I guess, look, I'm not going to be doing this forever and ever, and I've got to find someone to replace me. And in all the 20 years of A&R I've been working in this industry, he's the one guy that we had a moment with Adrian now, and I thought he would he would step up and be that guy. But Crucy really is. If I had to kind of sub me off and bring someone on, it would be Crucy. He's got this ability, again, to write a diverse... Um, portfolio of music effortlessly he doesn't tr he doesn't he doesn't feel like he's trying to do something he just feels like oh I can do that as well and, and I can do it with authenticity and integrity and he's really got it. he's got the whole lot he's got professionalism he's got the right attitude everything about him is right um, so you know my money's on him uh, we're backing him so they're two artists for two different reasons um, that we've signed and we're putting a lot of effort and energy behind I think I want to kind of jump on what we talked about earlier about signing uh, artists or, or tracks and um, I'll maybe give an example of each. Uh, an example of uh, an artist that we signed initially based on a track is uh, a guy called Charlie Boone. He has a, a record that he's been playing out loads. It has a, an Avicii sample in it, uh, which is bold, but it, re it really works. And we just heard him playing it and saw videos of it kind of in clubs and stuff. And that record was just so strong that we were like, right, we've got to get that, we've got to get him. Uh, and so we signed him purely, kind of, not purely, because he's got, he's got the full package. He's, he's, he's a lovely guy, he's, he's great on his socials, and he's, he's kind of very active in the scene. Uh, and and at, we had great personal relationships with him. But we heard that one record and we were like, right, that's, that's, that's enough reason to, to, to sign him and we want to build him and, and develop him based on one track. Another, on the kind of flip side of that, I've signed a Scottish guy called Magnus, who is a, comes from a singer-songwriter background, um, and he's an incredible musical talent, and I saw him doing some big features and collaborations sort of on other people's tracks, um, where I kind of knew he was quite heavily involved in, 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 in the kind of behind-the-scenes stuff on that, and we've signed him on a longer-term deal on the basis that there's a real talent there, and we can nurture it, and uh, we can build the tracks with him and, and build him kind of on a, on a journey. So when you all think about the artists that you've spoken about and the artists that you've mentioned, for any up-and-coming producers, what can they learn from those artists? Shall I start? Go for it. I think just to be yourself. That's, that's the most important piece of advice we can give you today. You know, people say, oh, can you give me a bit of advice? And I always say the same thing. And that's just be the best version of you. Don't try and be hot since 82. He's signed a defective now, apparently. So he's, he's gone. <laughs> right? Or Magnus, he's now Amara. We've got them too, and they're both very good at being themselves. Now, can you be the best version of you? Now, if you do things with passion and integrity and you do it from the heart, then straight away you are doing the right thing. You're, all, you're, you're getting it right straight away. The minute you try to be someone else and copy someone else, you're moving off, off course. So be the best version of you, because we need, we don't need Hot Sensation, we've got him, thanks, we need you. 
We need you guys, we need you to be the next version of the next person that steps into that chain. Yeah, so that's that's the one overarching piece of advice I can give you. I can give you no better advice than that. Yeah, I'd echo that. Just hone your own craft and your own sound and make it you and make it different to to the next person and the other artists that maybe you you you, you like or you're referencing. You need something unique that is ultimately you and it, you know, ideally can people can recognize as oh that's that's a song by you, you know that artist um, and some artists do that really well they have like a particular feature or a sound or just a style that, that is really really definitively them and you know if you can get that then then i think that's that should be the goal yeah be be too true to yourself and and your own lane you want to enter in um i think from an a and r point of view you can often tell when someone's sort of being a bit of a comedian and they're sort of matching to every single trend that's following. Um, it's kind of off-putting sometimes. So yeah, just definitely find out what your sound is, what you want to be, and yeah, and yeah, be yourself. Yeah, that's definitely a thing that I would recommend avoiding is the kind of changing your genre depending on whatever someone else is doing. And you know, it, from an A and R perspective, when you get a, a pile of demos from an artist and they're all totally different. That one's a copy of this person. That one's more like this person. And, and then you look at the artist's Spotify and there's four different sounds on there, all kind of totally different genres that have just yeah. copy other artists, other hits or, you know, records that have been big. Absolutely. And, and, and as an A&R, you think, well, where is that really coming from? What Are you doing it for the right reasons? You know, and that's the first thing I look at. Is this person doing it with complete integrity? Is, is it because they believe it? Now... You're not going to be very, when you start, you're not going to be very good at being you. Let's just be honest, because it takes practice. Practice, 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 practice. And then you get to be the better version. Practice makes better, not perfect. You'll never be perfect. But the more you practice being you, the better version of you. And that will take time. There are no shortcuts. There's not a bit about the bush. That will take time. I mean, I started writing, when I got into the, the uh, music industry, I was writing Soulful House. And I wasn't very good at it. I loved it, but I wasn't that great, to be totally honest. And it took me years and years and years and years and years to get to the point, 20 years in fact, to go, I'm actually quite good at this now. I'm going to start my own label. Uh, I back myself that much. We'll start Fool's Paradise, which you're all invited to tonight, by the way, um, at Leo. Um, but it takes time to get to that point. And, like, don't quit on yourself. Don't give up on yourself. Stick with that. Go, I'm this person. I love this shit. I'm going to play it. And over time, I'm going to get better and better and better and better and better. And then you will be that guy or that girl that has their own space in, in the music industry. So just quickly, though, when you're at that point and you're a new artist, and it's okay to say when you've had a load of hits and you're further down the line, but as a new artist, when you're getting to the stage where you're feeling like, is, am I going anywhere? Am I getting through? Am I getting stuff signed? And you might be getting, there's a lot of doors that are shutting your face in this industry, especially when you're new. What advice would you give for artists to get through that part? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to jump? <laughs> I was just, yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you've just, I think you've got to like, I don't know, take the pressure off yourself a little bit. Like, I don't know, there's a lot of, you know, some people are like, oh, you know, I've got to, like, quit my day job and blah, blah, blah. And, like, it's great if you can get to that point. But I think, like, the moment you... I mean, obviously, if you hate your day job or whatever, fine. But, you know, like, the moment you put so all the financial pressure on yourself as well, it, it, it can be a lot harder. So if you can kind of, yeah, I don't know, manage to, like, just work out a way to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Just take the pressure off yourself a little bit. Is there also a flip side to that, though, that if you're getting to the point where things are going well, to just take the leap and go all in? Yeah, it's it's a it's a fine balance. But yeah, I I do I do think that it it takes a long time to get to that point. I think unless and I you're th really lucky. There, there's two schools of thought here. There's two approaches, right? You can either go down the label route, and yes, you're going to get a lot of no's because that's how it works. You're going to get a lot of no's, or you could back yourself. You know, the reason we're all sat here is because I backed myself and then started touring. I was like, do you know what? I'm, I'm putting all this work into writing these records and it's getting matched with, with not the same energy. And that's not good enough. That's not good enough for me. I, I, I don't expect anyone to, to make my career. The only person I expect to make my career is me. Now, if I believe my, myself, I'll back myself. And that means building a team of people around you 
to back that idea, to back that vision. You have to have a vision. You go, I want to be this. This is this is the route I want to take. These are all the steps. And you write out, because this is the music in, It's the music business. It's not just music. We call it the music business for a reason. It's music and business. Now, you have to, you have to back both facets. You know, you have to... First and foremost, get the creati creativity now. Don't understand what you are, what you're going to be. And then you have to match that with business acumen and go, okay, if we want to bring this idea to life, this is what we're going to need to do. And we're going to need to invest because it is a business. You know, it's like if we opened a shop, we wouldn't open a shop without any budget. Go, this open a shop. Have we got any money? Oh, we've got no money. Well, it's going to shut very fucking quickly. <laughs> so it's the same thing. You need to create a strategy and investment to back that idea. So you got you can either go down the label route and if that goes well and you, you get associated with labels, you can do that and bounce across. And that is a very valid route. You know, there, there's something to be said for that. Dancing at a lot of parties, having lots of relationships, that's a very valid approach. It's the one thing I guess in my career I haven't done. So therefore, I sit in my own lane. And sometimes that works for me. Sometimes it works against me. You know, for example, at festival bookings, people don't know where to put me. If we're not doing a a, a tour and says, oh, where should we put Mark? Don't know where he sits. So that becomes a problem. But it also create. I also got own my own space. I back myself. So you can go, there's two different options. Do it yourself, build a team, create your own label and back your vision or go down the label route. Both very valid choices. I think just to kind of echo that, uh, at the risk of doing us all out of a job as, a, as an emerging, you know, independent artist, there's a lot you can do without a label in the early stages of your career. And I think really where a label adds value and can add value is when you are at a certain point where you, you need that real kind of boost to take you up into, you know, the real next level. There's a, a huge amount of stuff you can do now, uh, kind of yourselves and, and, you know, through distribution or through your own kind of... Uh, set up as, as Mark mentions but the other thing is I think in terms of for, uh, you know advice for people who keep getting knocked back <laughs> this industry is hard like you, you've got to just keep going because with with the internet with the, the availability of, of production software now with amazing things like Tool Room Academy there are more people trying to break into this industry than there have ever been it's never been this competitive and you know you are going to get knocked back, and it, it's it's unfortunate, but it's it's true. And there's still only the same amount of outlets for dance music, but 50 times more people trying to get that same radio play or that same Spotify playlist position. So this is not it's not easy, and it's not all fun and games. And you know, if you just got to keep going, and that sounds that doesn't sound that helpful, but. <laughs> I just wanted to jump on that, actually, because obviously as an artist myself, the one thing that I've noticed and the people that are cutting through is if you can really hone your uniqueness, like what is your USP? What, it is, what, it is, what is it about you that makes you stand out against everybody else that's coming through? And whether that's, you know, down to your personal brand, whether that's your show, whether that's your sound, I think the more that you can make yourself more unique than anyone else that sat beside you, that's what helps to get you to cut through. Yeah, totally. I mean, every single one of you are completely unique. N no one of you are a carbon copy of anyone else. Everyone is unique. So just play to being the best, like I said earlier, the best version of you. That's what you can be. You can't be anyone else. Because the minute you try to be someone else, it becomes transparent. We can see that. You know, if you're the best version of you and you've got the skills and you've got a character that matches it because people warm to characters, that's the reality. Once you've got people's attention, they want to know what you're like, you know, and, and as a person. And that is a big factor in today's market. You can't, unfortunately, be this aloof artist that it, it is all about the music. You need to match that, rightly or wrongly. It's not, you know, it's not something I'd necessarily sign up to, but that's the reality. So if you've got a great personality, you've got great skills, then you've got a great chance. I was just going to say, um, I think also it's just really important, like no matter what route you're going down, like, you know, the do-it-yourself or the being backed by a label, it's just always nice to work with good people. So I think if you're really nice and easy to work with, like people want to work with you and they want to help you, don't be an arsehole. I agree with that. <laughs> I, I do. I, no, true, I, though. It's so, it's so I true, that. Yeah. I, I agree with that so massively, but then I also think you also have to have boundaries, and I think there comes a point, especially if you're an artist without a team, that you try and be this really nice person, but there are times where you have to also, 
sometimes push I, it I think a being bit. easy to work with doesn't mean um, that you don't have boundaries or that you have to do what the label says. I don't think that at all. Um, it's just, it's more about like a level of professionalism and doing what you're going to say you're going to do because, you know, putting out music, uh, especially with a label, is a collaborative process. Um, so, yeah. No, that's, a to that's a completely fair point. I mean, we love work, and we can assign bigger rights over the, over time, but I go to work in music because I love it, and I don't want to go to work because work with a bunch of dickheads. Thanks very much. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll come work in the bank. No, no, respect, no disrespect to bankers. But do you know what I mean? I want to go to work, do something I love, and surround myself with people that are good people. So as Carly said, that, that makes a... A, a, a big deal. That is a big deal, and that's it's it's you know I want to work with Crucy or a, they're just good people who say, look, can you get this DJ mix done? And it's done. Not you have to phone them ninety seven times. <laughs> can you get this done? Can you because do you know what actually benefits you? Because it does it makes no skin off my back if you don't do it. Whatever. But if you've got people that match your level of input, and the more you you raise the more we'll match it. That's how it works. So if you drive things along, because at the end of the day, it's your career. We will only put in the effort that you put in. If you drive it and come up with ideas, come up with 20 ideas, okay, 18 might not be very good, but two might be brilliant. So you, know, you have to remember, when you s we work for you. You don't work for us at the end of the day. And that, that's another thing, a misnomer in management. It's and it, people surround you, they work for you. You're paying the bills here. You know they're taking money out of your pocket. So you've got to drive it. You can't sit there and go, oh, what do I do next? It's like right, I want to do all these things. Like Crucy, uh, uh, another great example of that. His energy's off the chart. It's almost hard to manage. But I would rather work with someone like that. You have to kind of contain this energy and go, dude, this is insane. All this, this these ideas, but. 18, they're not, that's great, but these two are brilliant. As opposed to going, come on, mate, we've got, a, we've got a record to put out. Let me drag you along. Come on, you've got to get, you've got to get up there. You've got to brush your teeth. Come on, you haven't done that yet. <laughs> so, you know, you'd rather work with those type of people. So if you, if you bring that energy as well, as Kylie said, you're, you're re reliable, you're efficient, that's a big, that's a big box ticked. And it, it also starts right from the very beginning when you're like reaching out to, to labels, like you know, people DM us or send us music all the time. And just the way that you like, the way that you approach me on a DM is like it's really important. I can like feel your energy through, like I can just, I know so much about you. Do you know what I mean? Just by the way that you've approached me. And if I'm like, oh, I just, you know, I don't know this person. I've never met this person, but if I'm like, oh, he's that one that sends, you know, really nice messages or whatever. I'm gonna like take the time, carve out the time to listen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So let's yeah, talk. And on the flip side. Oh, you go. Or you listen to my demo. Oh. Is also, <laughs> <laughs> which genuinely we get. Um, Replying to every just question story. Mark, question mark, yeah. question mark. Why aren't you replying? Like, yeah. that's well, awesome. I've done 97 demos and not mastered <laughs> or finished. Oh, great. Well, I should uh, spend, you know, don't uh, come with your best, absolute best moment and just one of them because the reality is we don't, there's only a limited amount of time. But, the other thing as well, I think, and I, some of the guy I trained with down the gym has said this to me, and I thought, this is brilliant, this, I'm going to use this. You have to earn the right to have that conversation. Now, that's how, and I don't want this to be misconstrued and like bolshy and arrogant, quite the opposite. But like, if you want people of, you know, if you're, I hate the hierarchy thing, but there is a hierarchy in music, there's a hierarchy in any industry. Like, if I want to have a relevant conversation, let's say with Messi, right? Now, I've got to earn the right to have that conversation that he's going to listen to me with validation. You know, I've got to say something to get to that point, to earn that right, to have a conversation with Messi where well, he's actually going to give a shit and listen. You know, by my actions, I've got to get to that point before I earn the right to have that conversation. I thought, that's really, you know, that, that, that rings true because so many people think, well, I'm going to send a DM and that'll be it, I'm in. It won't, is, is the reality. I mean, I wish I could say it was, but we just, there is only so much time. Now, through your a course of actions that you take that, that, that create interest, go, oh, okay, I've seen this guy or this girl popping up all over the show. They're saying something. Then you earn the right to have that conversation. So I think let's be realistic here, you know, today that if you can make those steps in the first instance to really build momentum, to build a, a degree of profile so that when you come with that moment, that record that is the one, you've got people's attention through through the history of what you've done in the past, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, definitely. So let's talk a little bit. I just want to go back to social media. Um, Carly mentioned the DM chat, which I think is so interesting. Um, what I'd love to know is when you're coming to signing a tune, obviously when someone sends you a DM, the first thing you're going to do is click on their profile, right? Yeah. So what are you looking for on people's social media um, and about their personal brand? What stands out? What, what are you looking for when someone's doing it really right? Uh, I mean, well, first of all, like, if you're one of those people that thinks social media doesn't matter in 2024, like, you are deluded. It, it definitely matters. Like, it's obviously, yes, yes, the music's first, but social media, like, is up there. And, you know, we, we've released music from artists with a really small following that maybe their socials aren't that great because it's a great track. Um, but if you are making good music and your socials are really good as well, we're going to pay loads more attention. Um, and, you know, good socials doesn't mean a, mean a bazillion followers. It doesn't mean that at all. It just, like, if I'm clicking on your profile, I just want to see that you are making an effort, like, and that's really clear straight away. And, um, I, like, I, I don't know, I think you, you need to kind of learn to enjoy the process. And, you know, we were talking before about how it takes a while to, like, be yourself. And it can take a really long time to learn to be yourself on socials. Like, I look back at my Instagram, you know, even five years ago, and I'm like, <laughs> um, it, took me, it took me, a, and, that's, and it's like that because it's, I'm just awkward and not me. Do you know what I mean? So it takes a long time, and... Um, it just takes practice. Like, just, you know, do a post every day. Like, you know, look at what everyone else is doing. You know, just, yeah, just, we just need to see that you're making an effort. It's your, it's your calling card. It's your business card. Griff? Yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of using this, the shop analogy that Mark used earlier. It's your front of house, your social media. And, and I don't think numbers are necessarily the key, but I always look for sort of like consistency in what you're posting and, and sort of knowing who you are as almost like an early brand. It doesn't have to be fully there yet, but consistency within your social media, yeah, is, is important, I always do believe. I think it's, it is important to invest in it. It, it. it is hard and not everyone is, is destined for it and to be that social person, but it, it's just part of it, as sort of Carly was saying. Yeah, it, you, you've got to get into it, yeah. I, I don't know if I entirely agree. <laughs> um, like... <laughs> It's a, it's a shop window for sure, and it should look professional. It should be representative of you and your brand. But ultimately, we can't make any money out of your social media. We're a record label. We sell records. Um, the music has to stand on its own legs. And I'm more interested in your Spotify profile and your SoundCloud account to see whether there is outlet, outlets there where you've got a community. And I think people misconstrue, uh, misconstrue uh, having a, a following and having a community around you with having numbers on social media, and it's not the same. If you look at people like Ben Hemsley, Hannah Lang, they've got massive communities around them, huge, dedicated fans. They're not necessarily through social media, they're through being in, maybe it's a local region, Newcastle, or through just having a real passion for their music, and they're not hearing the music on Instagram. They might hear a clip of it, but they're not listening to the records on Instagram. So I think, I actually feel like the, so the importance of socials has peaked, and I feel like it's maybe in decline a little bit now. We mentioned the TikTok hits. That's, all, that's a thing for major labels in particular at the moment, but I think, you know, certainly on this panel, uh, I don't know if we're fishing in that pond. Um, so I think, for me, it's, a, it's an important shop front. Make it neat, make it professional. Some consistent posting is important, but it's not something I'm looking at really, because ultimately you cannot sell a record that effectively through social media. Mark? Yeah, I tend to agree with Ben. I, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not a big advocate of looking at socials. If I do, I guess I look at, is this person well-rounded? I, I guess that's, that's the thing that I tend to look at. I, are Jesus. They, <laughs> I, I, know, I know it seems silly, <laughs> but like... When you, What's when your relationship you, like with your mum? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, so how far back do you want to go? Um, no, I do, honestly. I, I look at... I know this is a silly thing to say, but when you look at someone's profile that is so overly polished and, like, try hard, it's like... Again, for me, it doesn't reek of integrity. It just don't. I mean, look, we've all got a different... It's a subjective look, uh, approach to uh, socials. Everyone looks at it in a different way. But when you see that super polished... Oh, I'm going to go out and do a post today. 
uh, like type post. Like, really? <laughs> Really? Oh, I mean, is that... Did he say, po did he say polo? Is that really <laughs> necessary? Do you know what I mean? And why don't post. you post what you're like as a person? Because ultimately, that's what people connect with. It's like, do I want to be mates with Mark Knight? Is he a geezer? Is he the sort of bloke I want to go to the pub with? Do I want to go and see him live? And I think there is something to be said for, for being real. You know what I mean? For being yourself. I think... One of the biggest issues, and I, I guess we're going to talk about today, is, is the mental health issue we have in this industry. And that's because we put so much pressure and emphasis on it. It's like, it doesn't have to be the be-all and end-all. It really don't. You can do other stuff in life. You know, and I, I, and I guess if I reflected on my own career, the bit I got wrong was not doing all the bits that I liked in the right amount. I got too caught up in, like, oh, I have to be the best at this. You know, and so I lost out on so many things in life, so many opportunities, mates' birthdays, going doing other fun stuff, playing golf at an earlier age, <laughs> uh, all, of, all of those things. But I think, you know, if you can project yourself, again, as someone who bucks that trend of like, oh, I'm going to go and do a post of me standing in the middle of the road here today. <laughs> I, I honestly, I couldn't give a shit, mate, really. <laughs> right, well done you. You know, or that this is me being me. This is me on my bike. This is me playing football. I warm to that realness in, in, in someone's profile. So if I was going to take the time out to look at someone's, that would excite me more than this over-polished attempt to be, right, I'm going to be an artist. That, but that's just my take on it. If you can, like I said earlier, if you can match product with personality, then game on. Absolutely. But, you know, when people, sp it all becomes about that. And like, what's the last record you made, mate? You know what I mean? What what what's the last bit you where's the last time you contributed to this moving forward? It's a lovely picture. Great. But the, how's that <laughs> helping this scene evolve? Do you know what I mean? And if you don't do those bits, like I, I guess that's that's the kind of the the time I come from and you know, I'm it, this is all new, relatively new stuff. I still don't quite get it. I still don't see the importance of it. It's like let's just make music because that will you saying you're old. <laughs> I, am, I, I am old. I am old. I, 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 have, I have no problem with that whatsoever. And I, and I struggle. And I think there is something to be said for fighting for the fighting for some of the history and not losing sight of what will keep this alive and keep this sustainable. Because if we start to shift the inference away from that and it become all about image and perception, but there's nothing behind. Scratch the surface. Oh, oh, there's fuck all behind that. You know what I mean? That's that's rocky ground. That's dangerous. So look, I'm not trying to overplay this. My point is just that I think if you're going to go down and match it with product, match it with catalogue, match it with great music that builds and grows this scene. Because pictures won't. So the next thing, I've just been told we've got five minutes, so what I want to do is get to a really like gritty, nice question. Um, are was there that not gritty enough? It was pretty, it was pretty, good, it was pretty gritty, is wasn't it? Is it full contact, this <laughs> next question? I was going to take us a little bit further down the rabbit hole, but then I decided to back out. Um, <laughs> um, are there any specific red flags that result in a straight ignore when you're getting approached for demo submissions? Google Drive. Yeah. Google Drive. Oh, oh yeah. my god, Google it's Drive. terrible. Go Why do people use Google so Drive? Bad. It's awful. It doesn't even work when you press play. You have to download it onto your computer. It's worse than we transfer. That's the other one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we transfer, like, it expires. I just don't understand. <laughs> like, the link expires. So by the time we get around to listening to it, we can't. And I don't want to have to follow up and say, oh, can you send this again? No, we transfer. Um, for me, when someone sends, like, 20 demos and then, and then, and then phrases it, well, some are not finished and not mastered, like, why, God, or can you give me advice on how to finish these? Uh, no, is the answer, because I'm not going to phone you and say, I'm halfway through this track, mate, a um, little bit stuck for a lead, any chance you could throw in, you know, your two, <laughs> got any ideas? I mean, I'm a bit stuck. So, come with your absolute best moment, and if you can back that up um, with live plays, with, um, with it in context, that really helps go, oh, wow, look, shit, this is his record. Yeah, and not downloaded by a dub fire. Like, what I want to see is if you can get a live play from someone, play, context is really important. If you can match one brilliant record with a few examples of context, you really, really got our attention. Yeah, I think you mentioned that. Send one, because if we want to hear more, if we like the first one, we'll ask for more. Like, we're not going to go through 20 demos, because you, what's the priority? 
uh, you know, what, what are we looking for here? Um, I actually prefer more than one. I, pre I like about five, if you've got them. Yeah, yeah, Just saying. a small number. <laughs> like, it doesn't have to be one, but like, a, rather than the, the 20 SoundCloud link with 20, yeah, different demos, it's, that's a nightmare. I think also give us a bit of time. I think one thing when you send it in the morning, don't reply by like two, <laughs> and then at five, and then midnight. Like, we're obviously, we try and listen to everything we can, we're, but we're very, very busy as well, and, and just give us a few days to get through. I think persist, persistence is great, but too much is, is off-putting. Uh, we like to, uh, certainly, I like to sit on demos and listen yeah. in different environments, multiple times, yeah. you know, on, on different speakers, headphones, whatever. Um, and I think you kind of mentioned, a, I think it was a cruisy track, you heard it in the office and, and you were like, oh, what, what's that? that that's how we, I know a record is, is, is a winner. We're not, when we just play it in the background in the Armada office and the rest of the team are like, oh, what's this one again? Like, then, you know, Shazam out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you know that it, it's kind of, it works when you're not listening intently to it. Because that's one of the hardest things about A&R is, is focusing in on, on, on a record and maybe overthinking it or, or telling yourself that, oh, actually, yeah, that's a bit great. You need to hear it in the environment it's meant to be heard, which is either in a club or, you know, for, for people, regular people listening to it. And, and okay, one last question. We've got a minute to go. So quick fire. What's been your favourite track to sign and why? Each of you, Carly, go first. Carly Wilford. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, that was, it's just a really great song. I love really good songwriting. And that's, that's why I like Thanks, mate. <laughs> um, good, God, good question. Um, maybe Dave Spoon at night. It was a bit of a game changer mm. for us. Ben Hemsley erased me, became a, a massive part of his sets for like two years and, and also Ministry of Sound passed on it. That's how we got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably Jess Bay's Temptation, probably probably one of my faves, yeah. Nice. Guys, thank you so much. And can we give a massive round of applause to our panel? Thank you.